Hey everyone, uh, thanks for joining in on a Friday afternoon. My name is Venkatesh. I'll be your host for the session on behalf of Skilling. For those of you engaging with Skilling for the first time, we are an engineering upskilling platform focused on advanced technologies across mechanical, electrical, electronics, computer science domains. This is this webinar is part of our enterprise business to reach out to corporate professionals. This is the 17th edition of our webinar for corporate professionals. Today's webinar is on software defined vehicles from our architecture to application. Before I hand over the session to Mr. Pratap, uh, some pointers for all the attendees. The chat window is always open. Any questions, please post it on the chat window. Mr. Pratap will uh, answer them in periodic intervals. We will also share a feed feedback form towards the end of the session. Please do spare a minute to fill that up. We will not be able to share the deck. However, recording of this session will be shared to everybody. Please uh, request the same in the feedback form. I may I request everybody to maintain decorum during the session. A uh, quick introduction about our speaker today. Mr. Pratap Power is the director of enterprise solutioning and delivery at Skilling. He specializes in embedded and advanced embedded domains, particularly in software defined vehicles. With deep expertise in electrical electronic architecture, he has guided OEMs in developing domain centralized architectures and led large scale programs involving AutoSAR and ADA systems. We are excited to host and hear from you, Mr. Pratap. Over to you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Venkat. So uh, first of all, I just wanted to check if I've, if I'm audible, if uh, is it OK? So my yeah, voice and all is OK? Yeah, everything is clear. Screen sure, yes. So let us start. Uh, let's go ahead on this. So, uh, hi, uh, everyone. Uh, so my name is Pratap. Uh, so j I'll just uh, today welcome, uh, first of all, for this particular webinar. So we'll be talking on the software defined vehicles, a very good buzzword right now that every you go. If you look into any of the magazines of photo card professionals, or if you are looking into your new NPD development and all people are talking about software defined vehicles. So it's an emerging topic uh, and it is also evolving topic. So please bear with me for some time so that you'll understand what are the different kinds of architectures, what are the different kinds of uh, examples, okay? And what is the different, uh, you know, how do this, uh, new tools which are actually coming in to understand and to start developing in vehicle applications etc etc let us uh, go ahead and look into it so a quick introduction so my name is pratap arjujavarapu so i have a very good experience in uh, automotive and also into industrial automation as well so i worked in tire ones and erd services predominantly in automotive software so I um, previously, before joining Skilllink, I had my previous project into Telematics project, uh, which was actually, it's in the market right now uh, for Citroen C3 Aircross. So presently, I am uh, working as a director here in uh, Skilllink uh, for uh, B2B business to business enterprises. And uh, I'm also the practice head for STB in Skilllink. OK, so let us go ahead for the next one. So let us uh, first let us discuss on what is software defined vehicle. Uh, I think even if you go ahead and check into your uh, Internet and even if you use a chat GPT, whatever it is there, you get a lot of definitions saying that, OK, this is uh, what a software defined vehicle is. So if we amalgamate all these kind of definitions and we form one kind of definition that actually makes sense, I would prefer that. If you look into this, the 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 implementation and I mean the what is meant by software defined vehicle, we can say that it is the implementation of new functions and software updates throughout vehicle lifetime. This is the actual definition of software defined vehicle. So gen we actually use, I mean the software def uh, defined vehicles use the centralized computing architecture for the over the air updates, advanced connectivity, sophisticated driving assistance, and also for the autonomous driving capabilities. So the basic two features what defines a software vehicle is update and upgrade. Update is nothing but we are updating the vehicle's functions, especially when we talk about the vehicle maintenance. 
So we, we actually do the update via OTA updates, over the air updates. And the other thing is the upgrade functionality. So how do we do the upgrade? So we do, uh, if we wanted to push many features, like any new feature is there, you wanted to push that particular feature, right? For any kind of domain, you take ADAS, you take connectivity, you take uh, body control module. So if you wanted to uh, uh, put any new feature, so you will be upgrading that particular car. Right in your car, if you wanted to upgrade it, so both of the uh, things upgrade, update, and upgrade through the software and performing and implementing the functions, implementing the vehicle functions using the software updates throughout lifetime, throughout the vehicle lifetime, so that the vehicle stays relevant for you even after you start. You even if you buy uh, a longer time, if the vehicle is relevant for you, that's what we actually call a software driven vehicle. So uh, to enable this particular software-defined vehicle, uh, if we go into a little bit onto the architecture. So uh, we, if we are looking into the architecture part, uh, especially we have, uh, what is the difference between the traditional vehicle development and tomorrow's software-defined vehicle is there is one thing which is very, very predominant and that is called coupling of hardware and software. In the yesterday's, I mean, uh, I mean, present yesterday's uh, software, uh, I mean, traditional vehicle, we have software and hardware that are tightly coupled. But when we are going for the tomorrow's vehicle, the software defined vehicle, we have this software and hardware which are loosely coupled or decoupled. And what do you mean by this, like coupling? So there are two things. If you look into this picture, uh, to the left side of the picture, the first picture, if you see, let us say it is the timeline, okay? So in all our organizations, we are working on the projects based on a predefined timeline, right? So every inch of the software, what we are going to develop is completely dependent on hardware. I would say it's completely dependent on hardware because we have to make our software, we need to test it, we have to do multiple tests, either you can say the validation test, whatever name you give, you have to do multiple tests for that particular software. And finally, once we have the start of the production, then we are going to release the software and hardware together as a couple, right? But you look into the tomorrow's or the software defined vehicle here. So software and hardware are completely decoupled. They are loosely coupled. That means I don't have a prototype. I don't need a prototype of hardware that should be ready before we start uh, developing software. All right, so that means we can actually develop software without the need of hardware. How do we do it? Let us go ahead and look into it uh, once we go into the uh, architecture and all. But we can actually create the software without the actual need of hardware. And at the start of the production or before the start of the production, I would say, we can actually take this particular software and port it onto the hardware and we need to uh, manage the complete dependencies and the integration challenges, and hence your hardware will be ready. I mean, uh, the, uh, the, the production uh, suit is ready. Like for example, uh, software and hardware, the production suite, so that would be completely ready. And how we do this particular software, we can do it by using continuous development and continuous deployment once after the start of the production. Okay. So we will understand more in depth once we go into the architecture. But before that, I just wanted to make sure what is that, what are the different parameters? Sorry for that. Just give me a second. Okay. So uh, we can actually uh, look into what are the different uh, parameters that actually define today's typical traditional software development vehicle, I mean, so traditional uh, vehicle versus the software defined vehicle. If you look into the development cost, the cost for the development, it is not the vehicle cost, okay? And it is not the total cost of ownership as well. It is the development cost that will be far lesser for a software develop defined vehicle than compared to today's typical vehicle. And many a times, we cannot give the prototype early, the first software prototype, if we wanted to, for example, I wanted to make a new feature in ADAS. So that particular feature 
we if we wanted to make it uh, i mean we wanted to show it as a business case to anybody we wanted to make it a prototype of it it is really difficult because as i said previously it is tightly coupled and always dependent so i need to have my hardware ready i have to have my customized software ready so all these things are a lot of uh, things which will and also we have to see what who are the suppliers so there are a lot of dependencies there so the first prototype is going to take months but when you look into the software defined vehicle the first software prototype can happen in hours in a matter of hours so i'll just give you a hint over here how it is going to happen in hours it's completely on the cloud computing so we create an ecu instance and and we create uh, we we get the software running on in the cloud and there are things which are coming up so let us see and now time to market this time to market is not for the prototype this time to market is for the complete production vehicle so this particular production vehicle will be taking 3 to 5 years in the today's typical vehicle but it will maximum take weeks to months provided we resolve all the dependencies and also provided uh, we do the complete integration testing and everything right all your sales all your hills has to happen on time to make sure that we get this particular vehicle from weeks to months so hence your total time for developing a production ready vehicle for a software defined nature is very fast this is the actual point over there and approach uh, for today's typical vehicle we have a uh, first time right at sop but for software defined vehicle we do have mvp can be created minimal viable product and as i said the uh, the prototype itself is taking just an in the matter of hours but mvp we can actually in the same way we can actually do it in hours itself right and the continuous improvements whatever we can do we can do over there uh, very easily and software hardware integration i have already covered this so i am not going to cover but very important thing for me is the scalability so the scalability when we look into it so we have a different code for every car variant in today's typical vehicle but when we look into the software defined vehicle so we will be having the same code for all car variants so what does that mean so we have this ee architecture which will be ready right so generally uh, if you look into the european markets they are calling it as a skateboard the skateboard which they actually term it as a skateboard so the skateboard actually refers to you are going to have your ee architecture ready so the same architecture will be will be mimicked all over your car variants and you have your customized os as well ready for example mercedes benz comes up with mb.os Volkswagen comes up with vw.os and gm uh, general motors they come up with something called if i correctly remember it's utilify that's the name of their customized os so that customized os again that is built on top of uh, a different uh, variant of linux for example uh, either it can be from the agl or yocto and they also make some uh, very customizations for with respect to their own vehicle skateboards right so so we have these things will be ready and what the best thing what we can do in the software defined vehicle is we can actually ota over the air update all the new features that actually which we think they were relevant but with today's typical vehicle and today's typical architecture it's not going to be possible so let us see what are the uh, top 6 engineering challenges that is mostly uh, you know mostly relevant to us as engineers so what are the top 6 engineering challenges in adopting sdb so the question here is if if you think that a software defined vehicle as i said it's it's giving such kind of wonderful prototype uh, it doesn't have any issues with respect to the prototype we can have it in hours number of in in the matter of just hours and it's loosely coupled and everything is good but why are we not adopting that particular sdv right now there are these are the multiple reasons these are the top 6 engineering challenges i would say so managing software complexity that's the first thing i i wanted to talk on that so right now uh, if you are looking at a software defined vehicle 
you get you you need to write a lot of data a lot of code millions and millions of code and not only that the major problem over there is your vehicle is connected so it is getting connected to various various infrastructures like we call it v2x v2x communication is nothing but vehicle to everything communication right so vehicle is connected to most of the things most of the iot things i would say so every iot thing whenever it is getting connected there is a communication that takes place and there is a data exchange that is being taking place right so there's a lot of code that needs to be written and that needs to be you know uh, managed properly which is coming from from uh, various iot things which which the car is connected as well as uh, in vehicle operations as well so that is a very huge complexity that presently the software defined vehicle uh, the consortiums are trying to figure it out how we can actually go ahead on that the second point is ensuring cyber security i think you know this thing you already know what are the different uh, uh, probable challenges that we are presently facing in cyber security and we have we know what are this but now as i said just uh, visualize the uh, the information what i told for managing software complexity that your car is getting to getting connected to various iot devices v2x communication so god knows who is going to hack it or we have to know how many security vulnerabilities are there in the first place so ensuring cyber security is always a challenge and will remain a challenge and the third one is the standardizing hardware interfaces and apis okay now this is very interesting standardizing hardware interfaces and apis the reason why i am saying it is interesting is we all know that uh, at the lowest level we will be having the ecu sorry let me go into a little bit uh, lesser level we have the sensors we have the actuators so sensors gather the information and it will try to talk to the ecu and ecu talk to a uh, different ecus based on can communication and etc etc right this is what we we generally know most of the times so but uh, right now in order to have in order to start developing this sdv and make sure we get a prototype in the number of in the matter of hours i will not be caring what is what is happening at the very lower end i wanted a vehicle abstraction layer if if you guys are if someone in the uh, crowd i mean someone uh, is working on android automotive systems aos would probably know what is this what i'm talking about your vehicle we have vehicle hardware abstraction layer etc etc in the similar phase we have something called a hardware interface a vehicle abstraction layer and the apis that needs to come up uh, from that so that what will happen over there i don't want it to understand what is happening be below that particular layer all this ecu ec2 ecu to ecu communication all my uh, zonal if it is a zonal architecture how the zones are getting communicated with the high performance computer i don't want it to know all these things that needs to be taken care by someone and give a, a api or a hardware interface so that my application whenever i am trying to write a software application this application will consume those apis and play with it right so that is one of the challenge right now but uh, we are also going into it uh, we, are, we i mean there are some methods there is a separate uh, for, uh, consortium who are actually working on these things uh, which are nothing but eclipse consortium eclipse sdv foundation they are actually working on this uh, hardware interfaces and apis so i'll i'll cover that as well once we go inside uh, when we are looking at the project and everything but yeah we'll 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 uh, look into it so the fourth point is adapting different methodologies this is this is on top of um, what kind of development methodology you are looking into is it agile is it safe i mean safe is a scaled agile framework but uh, will agile working is it possible agile way of working is it the right way if it is an agile way of working how does the development team testing team how do they interact and collaborate with each other with res with respect to a software defined vehicle and really is are the tests which are happening right now uh, can also be happening in the cloud so how are we going to navigate that so there are a lot of things that are uh, needs to find the solution for these things 
that we will be also be looking into and uh, ensuring functional safety and compliance this is a traditional challenge that we already have right now and the same goes for both and the final one is the transitioning of legacy systems so tell me one thing that uh, we now have autosar autosar with autosar we are writing some applications and these applications we are not going to throw it away because we just wanted to make sure how do we transition from this legacy systems to come to a application? So these applications are nothing but they are being containerized. So they are, these particular applications are completely containerized applications. So now how are we going to containerize a legacy autosar application? So that's a foot for your thought. So that is one of the challenge and how easy it is, what is the ease of uh, doing that particular thing. So there are a lot of things that are also uh, coming to us as a challenges right now. That is exactly where we need to look into. And now, uh, since we found out the challenges, so let us let me take you into a nice uh, uh, view of uh, SDB applications, the types of SDB applications. So what are the dis dis different, uh, different applications? So I, I can just go ahead and give you that, okay, this is a kind of application, this ACC, this, this is ABS, or, or this is a, a automotive lighting application, et cetera, et cetera. But that doesn't go through us, uh, go through it, because what we did here is, uh, by the way, this, is, it, this information is available for you in, in, in the public domain as well. So what we did, this is a, these are the different vehicle domains, correct? Infotainment, control body and control power train chassis and ADAS. So this is that these are all the domain specific applications. For example, ADAS, ABS, ACC, uh, lane changing. All these are domain specific applications. And if you look into infotainment, infotainment, you have a HVAC. Let us say HVAC is there. HVAC is also an in, uh, domain specific application. There are these particular applications, right? They are divided into three three broad categories: domain specific, cross domain, and finally the ecosystem based application. So, so domain specific, we are already working. We know what it is, so I'll not be going into it. By mostly specifically, I'm and trying to go into cross domain specifications, cross domain applications, and ecosystem based applications. So let me go to the cross domain application. So one example of cross-domain application is this personal wellness, post-workout recovery and comfort. So what is happening here? So now what is happening is uh, uh, this particular lady, once she has uh, finished her workout, she's just trying to check her calorie count. And she's completely unaware what is happening in her car. Now, while she was checking it, and she's about to reach her car, okay? So the car responds to the particular, this thing, particular uh, change in her uh, body temperature, change in her uh, calorie count, et cetera, et cetera. And car understands that, okay, she might be tired. And it adjusts with the ambient, soothing, uh, soothing ambient lighting and the required right amount of temperature in the car and it will play a very soothing music. So how is this going to be possible? Connection, the vehicle to vehicle to uh, device, V2D, connect, V2D uh, connection, the vehicle to device uh, thing is one thing. And how does the car actually tune to whatever has happened? So this is a cross domain. You have a telematics here. V2X communication is happening. So this is a telematics as well as, and, and also the HVAC will be, is, needs to start working because the AC, the blowers should work and uh, the infotainment division has to work because of the music, the ambient lighting ECU has to work. So there are multiple things that need, that will be working. So this is one good example of cross domain application. The next cross domain application is dog mode digital. So this is being used in Tesla. This is no secret. This is being used in Tesla. 
So if you are aware of dog mode digital, so how uh, I just give you in a glance of it, if you aren't aware. So uh, what will happen here is uh, a customer comes to a shopping mall. He parks the car outside and with his couple of dogs inside and he leaves. OK, and the car is locked. But someone has to know that the, the temperature of this car is good for, uh, for the dogs as well as it has to send a message to the passerbys, I mean, sorry, uh, bypassers to make sure that they understand that the owner has left them and on purpose and he has taken the proper care for the dogs. So what will happen is the infotainment screen here, if you are able to see it, the infotainment screen is actually showing that my owner will be back soon and it is giving us 70 degrees Fahrenheit temperature. So any passerby will understand it and they'll understand that, okay, this is the, uh, the dogs are safe. Okay. Now let's go to the next one. And this is an ecosystem application. Okay. Now we have seen the cross domain application previously, but this is a connected ecosystem application. Now, whenever I speak about ecosystem, we are going outside of the car again and to a different device altogether, to different uh, unit altogether. So, this is the EV scheduling that needs to happen uh, uh, while, while it's charging during the off peak hours. So what will happen here is the electric vehicle. So you are having an electric vehicle right now. And I think many of you are already seeing a lot of electric vehicles on the road. So this particular electric vehicle will talk to, I'll put it in very layman terms. This particular electric vehicle is going to talk to your nearby or your vicinity, uh, which is there in your vicinity, like a V2G unit. This is a uh, grid unit. Okay. So where you can go and charge your car. And that whenever it, it talks to it, it makes sure that it schedules your battery charging at off peak hours. That means whenever you are per Per unit charge is low, it is going to schedule that particular time for your charging and it will give you a notification to you as a driver to make sure that, okay, today at 4.30 p.m., please go ahead and charge your car. And who is, and this fellow uh, right now, it, they, they are not going to burn our pockets. They are taking care of our pockets. Definitely, they are making sure that it is lesser and it is going to give the best optimum price. So think about it. How many domains, how many, uh, how much of the technology is being used here? What are the different domains? We do X for sure. We do G is already there. And optimization, AI ML optimization shall happen here because it has to give you the right amount of time where we need to go and get our car charged. So, and you're making sure that uh, your battery uh, voltage and battery conditions are all good for the charging. So it takes care of everything. So the last example, I would say, and very, very interesting thing is this creative extension of your social media presence. So you will be shocked to know that uh, whenever uh, you're tra uh, trying to travel in a car, right? Sometimes let us say you are going to a place, uh, let us say you're going to a hill station, okay? And while driving most of the times, you might feel like, wow, what a, what a scenic view. I would love to have a picture here, right? That kind of, uh, I think that might be, that kind of wish could have come to you. But just uh, understand, what do you think if your car itself takes a picture of your car like this and it will give it to you in your notification, in your uh, uh, display, asking you, can I post it in your social media? So that is the level of capability of the software defined vehicles. That is where we are actually looking. This is, by the way, uh, if you if you wonder, I would say this is a real image of a car, of a, a computer generated image that is being given to the car's dashboard to paste it in a social media and the driver is inside the car. I'm telling you this. 
there this is a proof of concept by order okay so let us go to the next one uh the next one we will be looking into the philosophy of a software defined vehicle so my intention is not to bore you saying okay it's a philosophy of a software defined vehicle but my intention is to make sure if you miss any of the things which is given here you are not going to make a software defined vehicle and then that's what that's we can we cannot call it as a software defined vehicle so what are these the first one let us start with this it's flexibility and adaptability flexibility is nothing but the coupling of software and hardware the loose loose coupling of the software and hardware that actually i have described to you previously and the adaptability is the ota part your over the air updatability okay so any software defined vehicle you need to make sure we have this flexibility and adaptability and the second one is the modularity and reuse so modularity every functional component or every software defined vehicle uh, function component or in a very uh, a traditional way if you would say a container that needs to be modular and it should be reused across different vehicle models and skateboards okay that is what the modularity and reusability is and the next one is the enhanced functionality and customization if you make a software defined vehicle and there is no proper customization that you are giving to the end user and that that is actually denying the philosophy of a software defined vehicle okay you need to provide the customization for the particular feature for uh, for any kind of feature for uh, the driver or the owner as well as the enhanced functionality the next one is the fourth one is the integration and interoperability so integration this integration i would say that uh, we have lot of sensors that will be connected here okay uh, a software defined vehicle generally says i will reduce the number of ecus but it will never say that i will reduce the number of sensors okay so there are lot of sensors from which we are getting a lot of data is being collected and this particular sensor data need to be integrated properly for further processing of your zones or the hpcs or the v2x etc etc and interoperability is nothing but you are interacting the the amount of interaction that you have with various systems especially when you go outside of your vehicle your v2x vehicle to everything you have to make sure your interoperable interoperability has to remain efficient and smart and and the, the next one will be the so cost efficient upgrades this is pretty specific it is quite obvious like cost efficient upgrades uh, we are providing a customization but if it is not cost efficient and i am not going to buy as a owner right and then the, the next one will be the safety and security by design and this is mostly i would say you know very well how much safety and security is going to play a major role in the near future for any software defined vehicle the next one is the enhanced ux and interaction so enhanced ux this is very uh, you know i would say very very uh, it's a selling point i would say i have let me say i have a very good features etc etc but when the at the end of the customer the one who interacts with the customer is the dashboard and the hmi screen whatever we have there he he actually needs a better ux right user experience with respect to the app designing with respect to the applications etc etc so that is the unique selling point i would say because if ever you have multiple features in the car but still you are not able to uh, when you when you just try to press your uh, hmi and it is it is unresponsive then there is no use correct and the last one will be the continuous improvement and innovation you need to start updating and upgrading the software vehicle with respect to software ota updates ota updates 
okay so this is very important make sure you don't miss any of these things if you are going to go ahead with a software defined vehicle now as engineers let us come to the very very important part the technical part from i think most of you are here to understand what is our architecture looks like so this is our architecture for a software defined vehicle and this is uh, this you know it is an amalgamation of almost most of the architectures i i think like uh, we have gone through this thing we have we have validated this particular architecture and finally found out okay this 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 looks good and this is how a software defined vehicle should look like so let me start on this uh, we have let me say uh, the left side here and the right side so this left side is the onboard vehicle services and the right side will be the completely cloud based the cloud tech okay so now let us go into the car and understand what it is the first and foremost the baseline the basic and the skateboard as i said is your architecture the electric electronic architecture okay so your e architecture is getting transition from a from a distributed eco architecture to a domain centralized domain architecture to a zonal architecture connected to a hpc high performance computers so how is this happening how 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 do we define zones how do we derive zones how how uh how these zones are getting communicated with one another and how these particular zones are getting communicated to a high performance computer and this high performance computer how it is connected to the outside world so all these things are very very important so without an e architecture all these things are not going to make any sense so make sure your electric electronic architecture along with that is that's what i have said on, on the architecture part right domain central zonal etc etc but that is not limited to it because we need to find out the sensor placements we need to find out the actuator placements we need to make sure we we understand the wiring harness that needs to go into it we need to understand the voltage levels of it where and all we need to get the proper particular voltage you cannot give a 48 voltage uh, to a 12 voltage requirement uh, required actuator right so all these things you need to take care along with the complete skateboard which i already told you so now after ee architecture we go into the sock so every ee architecture once we have it what we will have you need you, you will have a board okay that particular board i'm not talking about the development board i'm talking uh, inside the component of that particular board we have a sock right system on chip we need to understand what are the different system on system on chips that will be used for different different domains we need to understand the gpos general purpose operating system we need to understand the hypervisors that will actually take care of the all the virtual machines that are coming to the uh, to us that i'll show in the next slide we need to understand uh, middlewares and in this is the middleware see once if someone asked you uh, are you working on autosa classic right so autosa classic right now is is a very different thing i previously what used to happen i have a board and uh, i will write some autosar classic application and autosar classic itself has an osec uh, os so using that os using the system abstraction layer i'll i'll talk to the rte and my software components are going to communicate with the rte so all these things are good but right now the biggest chunk of understanding comes under this the containers previously you are having a you are just showcasing your applications and you are you, you are trying to give that application directly and someone else is consuming those applications but you are now containerizing these things and why are we containerizing this because of one of the philosophy i said is, uh, before that modularity and flexibility reusability that's the basic philosophy of sdv right so that's the reason we have to containerize those particular applications right so for all the containers containers to run we need to have a container runtime it's like an rte in auto sir okay so these containers now once we have the containers and these containers are what 
these containers comes with infotainment service plus binaries plus libraries, ADAS service plus binaries plus libraries, some other service plus binary plus library. Let, let us say seat service, seat adjusted service. And uh, let us say uh, power train, uh, power distribution service. So there are multiple kinds of services till container one to container n. We can actually have all these services. And these are the guys who actually uh, uh, start your onboard vehicle services. Right. And just to say one thing, I, I, I have missed one thing here. Very important thing is in the middleware, we are not limited to Autosar Classic or Autosar Adaptive. There's something called ROS, Robot Operating System, your DDS, Data Distribution Systems. These are very, very important because ROS and DDS, they are used in uh, ADAS services, especially ROS2. And ROS2 is an open service by the uh, open source. So ROS2 is used in ADAS applications, especially for robot operating systems. And also not only in ADAS, it is majorly used in autonomous driving, AD. Okay, so all these things are there. Uh, we, we just need to understand these things. And I'll come to this part in the next slide. Just hold on to it, mixed critical orchestrator, because everything is fine. The only thing is we are not dis distinguishing between safety and non-safety. That I'll talk to you in the next slide. But before that, uh, I just wanted to finish this thing as well, right side. So we have a virtual ECU, we have a Linux-based OS, and we actually come with uh, EC2 instance, EC2 instance creation with respect to different different socks. For example, NVIDIA. NVIDIA have a different sock. Okay, and uh, uh, Qualcomm. Qualcomm will actually uh, we can actually use that Qualcomm sock to create a EC EC2 instance. EC2 is nothing but Elastic Compute. Elastic Compute to instant. We can actually create for Qualcomm, NVIDIA, your Intel, and uh, ST Microelectronics, uh, and Infineon. So whatever uh, SOC you, you bring in, I can actually take it, and I can create that. And I can use the different kinds of middlewares, like AWS, IoT, Greengrass. Also, you can have uh, adapt to Autosar here. Also, you can have uh, Autosar Classic in the cloud. So the basic fundamental, this is very important, the basic fundamental of a software-defined vehicle is you will create your software on the cloud and this we will run it multiple times in the cloud and then try to port it onto the board which is present here in the car. And you will not do this for everything. There is There are, there are different things here. There are different uh, considerations, there are different challenges, etc., etc. And depending on the domains, depending on the uh, domains, whatever you are working on, you actually employ this kind of practice. So basically, what we need, what uh, when when we speak with most of the OEMs and we speak with the different consortiums, we got to know is this that we are going to take this particular, uh, we we wanted to take this particular development activity on the cloud, and then send it to the board, and it has to work. That's exactly what it is, your OTA, your firmware OTA, your uh, firmware over the air, your your application OTA, application over there, or some people call it software over there. Those are the things what we need to do here. So I think uh, I have covered enough on this architecture. Uh, and I just wanted to uh, uh, brief on these four very important, uh, the I would say the, the, the initial, consortium of any software defined vehicle are these people whoever has joined in okay covesa uh covesa has uh vss uh, this vehicle signal specification covesa vss your eclipse sdv foundation your sophie your autosar so these p four people for together form the consortium to actually start developing an understanding of sdv Okay, so Sophie is nothing but scalable uh, oriented, scalable oriented architecture for embedded edge. Service oriented, no, no. It is actually scalable oriented architecture for uh, embedded edge. So I just wanted to check it. But yeah, Sophie is one of the organization who actually gives the, the uh, 
blueprint on how we need to go ahead with containerized cloud native applications development. So they give the rules, they set the rules. We need to follow those rules to make sure we get a containerized applications. Okay, and AutoSAR is a very famous thing. I don't want, want to uh, speak more on it. Eclipse SDV, Eclipse SDV, they are doing a very good job. Uh, they are also coming up with uh, multiple tools for uh, creation of on in vehicle service applications and all that I'll be showing you uh, in the next coming slides. Now, now I missed one thing. I, I told you one thing that mixed critical orchestrator. I'll tell you in the next slide. Let us go ahead and look into it. So mixed critical orchestrator, I just wanted to differentiate ASIL components and QM components. Okay. How does that happen? Now that I have a SOC, as what we have seen in the previous architecture, we have a SOC, we have a GPOS, we have a hypervisor, we have a middleware, and coming on top of it, we have two different virtual machines. This virtual machine is dedicated to ADAS, this virtual machine is dedicated to infotainment. So these virtual machines, right, they have the same kind of architecture again. Virtual hardware, virtual hardware means you are trying to take a EC2 instance in the cloud. On top of it, you have your ATOS, like AOS or QNX, et cetera, et cetera, real-time operating systems, and you have a communication layer, and you have a middleware, and you have containers. So if you look into the containers, right, here, ADAS is major, majorly on, you never have a QM component in ADAS. You either, at the, at the least, you might have a SIL B component, just like indicator warning, but mostly you'll have SLD components, right? So now when compared to the infotainment, it is very quite rare that you will have SLD component in virtual machines. Probably you might have SLC and mostly it will be QMs. Okay. So we are actually trying to converge these things. So now, now what has happened? I am isolating this. This complete thing I'm isolating when compared to the mixed criticality orchestrations. Now, these are the critical things. They are staying in one virtual machine. These are the other critical things. They are staying in another virtual machine. The failure of any of the virtual machines will not be impacting the other virtual machine. Right? So that is actually the understanding of mixed criticality orchestration. So next, let us go into the, uh, if you are all okay, then I'll take you through the next one, which is called Eclipse Velocitos. Uh, so as I said previously, Eclipse SDV Foundation, they're doing a very fantastic job. They are trying to go ahead with uh, Eclipse Velocitos. This is one of the tool. It's an open source tool. You can try it out. It's, it's I would say it's a framework. It's not a tool as I would say it's a framework. And this particular framework, we can use this framework to create applications. And this is what? In-vehicle applications. And all these in-vehicle applications are nothing but the containerized applications. So how do we do it? And what are the different problems and what are the different solutions which we actually uh, uh, made to find out uh, Eclipse Velocitas tool? I'll just let you know. Yeah. So this is the problem here. So currently, the in-vehicle applications right, can be excessively complex and challenging. We all know that because absolutely time consuming, no doubt about it. But because we need to test it, we need to find the customer requirements, stakeholder requirements, software requirements, and we need to test those requirements, develop it, and retest it, etc., etc. There are a lot of things. And setting the development environment for a proper AutoSAR application itself is a very time consuming task. For, a, for classic autos that I'm speaking. So, uh, so setting up the development environment itself is a re really difficult uh, task to do right now. And the understanding of the vehicle EE architecture. I don't think, you know, the second point when compared to coming to the second point, this particular electronic electric architecture is pretty new for us as engineers from, uh, uh, from tire ones to OEMs. I mean, OEMs, I think they, they could have mastered this thing, but for tire ones and also for uh, ERD services, uh, it is a very new topic, vehicle EE architecture, because we never went into that deep. And there's a lot of 
a lot of change that is happening over there in EE architecture. Previously, the the only EE architecture we know is multiple ECUs. We call them nodes connected to one another in the CAN bus or LIN bus or whatever it is. So we have a bus and they are connected. This is the maximum what we can understand. But there are a lot of things which are un, uh, trying to change right now because we never have used to have something called an API, right? Specific API requirement and how do we get an API? No, because we, we used to store all these particular communication messages in DBC file and we take those particular messages, scan messages and, and we incorporate them in the code and we start writing it. But can anybody tell you that, okay, uh, I don't want to care about all those things. I wanted a clear cut API. For example, I wanted to understand what is the sensor value, uh, which sensor vehicle speed sensor value. I wanted to get an understanding and, and the data from the vehicle sensor in real time. So what you will do, you have to go to the canvas, you have to look into can messages. But in SDV right now, I don't want it. I just have a Covesa VSS vehicle signal specification where it will say vehicle dot speed dot sensor dot value. That's it. Vehicle dot sensor dot speed dot value. And that's an API that is being exposed from the EE architecture. And my applications are going to consume it. If if I, if that doesn't make any sense to you right now, next slides will definitely make uh, I'll make it very clear on that. Next third one is the porting a vehicle app to another vehicle platform is complex. Hands on hands down, this is absolutely this is the point that we have a vehicle application and just in the same model, same variant, we wanted to install that particular application itself is a very difficult task for us because of the integration challenges. And we are talking something on the other vehicle platform. No, it is a different, it's a very difficult uh, problem. So we agree with it. And there are a lot of methods, processes, tools within each company, within the organization. And also we need to follow the rules set by ASPIs. We need to follow the rules set by ISO 26262. And I, I am not saying that these rules will not be followed in, in uh, SDVs. I'm not saying that. They need to be followed, but in a very, very different way, very, very convenient way. Okay, so this is the solution. The final solution, what uh, this particular development tool chain is giving to us is usage of the standardized vehicle applications, APIs. I already spoke to you on this. I will just require that vehicle speed sensor value. Someone is giving me the APIs. I can go and start using them, right? Enabling portability through containerized vehicle apps. The portability issue is also solved right now because these are all containers. And these containers, let us say, I can actually throw this container to the cloud and from cloud, I can get it to uh, the vehicle. And it is not that easy when I'm talking, but yeah, we need, uh, but slowly we have to progress in that way. That's what I'm mean to say. And pre-configured project setup, the whole development environment is set up for us. And speeding up of the development by reducing complexity, focusing on differentiating business logic to innovate quickly. Hold on to this point. I'll tell you what it is. What do they say is differentiating business logic to innovate quickly. Now, this particular Velocitos tool chain now the vehicle app developer has to focus mainly on the business logic, not on any of these things. Any of all these things will be taken care of by Eclipse's DP Foundation and this particular Velocity tool. And by the way, uh, just to for your information, I am not um, endorsing this particular uh, tool. I'm just telling you because it's an open source tool and it it we can actually use this particular tool for any of our customizations. Okay, and it comes from Eclipse, so that there's a good amount of trust for us to actually go and look into that particular tool, make any kind of changes. See, every every uh, uh, software components here and everything are open source. The code is there. We can make multiple changes and we can actually work on it. So basically now uh, coming to the point, uh, vehicle app developer will only concentrate on the business logic. And this is the vehicle app development tool chain where you have a vehicle app and it is connected to a Cooksaw broker, Cooksaw vehicle abstraction layer. 
Okay, now let me take you to the next slide and explain you what is the first, what is this slide means. Let us come from the very bottom up. Okay, I have a seat ECU, I have a HVAC ECU, and I have a vehicle computer. So all these ECUs, what we know is these ECUs are connected to one another using a bus, some vehicle bus like CAN or some IP or or different kinds of other communication network. So these are all connected. Now, someone has to get this information and store it in a database. Okay, we call it as feeder. So this information, whatever sensor values, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, actuator, actuator uh, ident information, Okay, and uh, for example, HVAC ECU, you have different different informations, right? So all these things, someone has to take it and put it in a database. We call it data feeder. Okay, so these get, are getting feeded into it. Okay, and now someone has to provide information, whatever stored information to the outside world. So that we can start writing applications by consuming those things correct so who is going to provide we call them provider service providers okay now look at this line dotted line very carefully the whole right side is oem or vehicle specific oem or the vehicle specific where you are going to i mean the you are not going to worry about all these things. Someone is already doing it for you and they are giving those values here. And they send it out saying that these are the values, go ahead. And they will publish these particular values to a data broker. If someone is working on MQTT, they know what is meant by data broker very, very well. So this particular data broker, it will take all the values we call we have two kinds of uh, top, uh, topics over there concepts over there one is uh, publish uh, uh, publishing the information to the data broker and exposing the information to the outside of the data broker right so uh, those are the things which actually uh, gave it over there i forgot the other name what we call one is a publish message and uh, there is another uh, word for it not able to remember but anyways but I think you're getting the concept. So someone is trying to give this information and put it on the data broker. Okay. And someone has to subscribe. Yes, now I got the word. So now someone has to subscribe to this particular data broker to get the information. And everything will be doing will be done by using the GRPC collector interface. Okay. This is a interface communication, GRPC. And it is mostly synchronous as well as asynchronous communication. Okay, either you use MQTT or you use GRPC. But since it's a more lighter weight than MQTT, we are using GRPC here. So now, as the the thing is, once we have this information from the Cuxa data broker, my applications, various applications, they only interact using a unified or a standardized vehicle API. Okay, now think about it. Not only automotive engineers like us, these particular applications can be written in C, C++, Rust, Python, C Sharp, Node.js, and many more languages, C Sharp, etc. So that means that there will be multiple people, multiple third party developers who doesn't know anything about automotive. If I'm telling it, just you, you can just believe it to me that any kind of developer, even who is working in Facebook, can come and grab this unified API and he can start writing an application. And that application can be hosted on an app store. And someone from the car, from our car, we are we are actually driving a car, let us say, we can download that particular application from that app store. 
please also go ahead and check this particular app store which is uh, called sdverse they are trying to come up with this sdverse they are trying to work on this particular uh, app store right now which is a joint collaboration between gm wipro and uh, bit I, i'm not so sure about it but yeah gm and wipro and magna magna yeah thank you uh, so uh, gm wipro and magna uh, they have collaborated together to to form a company called uh, sdverse and sdverse is actually working on this thing that they will host as a marketplace for all your apps all your apps whatever you are going to write that will be over there and you can easily download if if for example let us say i have a ford car i will subscribe to that particular sdverse car app store and then once my company my ford ford is able to subscribe to that particular thing then e easily i can get all those apps and everything okay so now i think you understood probably why i am mostly focusing on this vehicle abstraction layer i need an abstraction uh, this particular abstraction will be used as an unified interface for me so that it provides a unified interface for me so that any of the application developers can come up and take this particular this particular api and they can start developing the apps okay so finally uh, let me take you into the more uh, information and how we need to do it now i just showed how are we going to look into uh, the broader picture but how do i use this velocitos is where what we are actually looking into it right now so this particular vehicle app developer he will actually try to get the vehicle app template he uses the vehicle app template and also he uses a vehicle model generator this model generator is nothing but uh, you have different models you, it's like classes that will be generated okay it creates multiple classes based on the uh, vss specification okay so now this fellow this vehicle app developer he takes a lot of uh, information from this from the vehicle app template he takes that uh, particular uh, thing and he will take a particular file and he will start writing his own code if this particular vehicle model generator will use the different vehicle app sdks software defined uh, sorry not software defined uh, software development kits sdks so we he, he will be using uh, vehicle abstraction vehicle app abstraction middleware apis and also the broker client because someone has to stay inside to actually talk to the outside outsider right so this client is here there's a data broker server is here so we either subscribe or set or get the information from uh, data broker client to the data broker and all the information from your ecus will be fed into the data broker as i said data broker is a database now these people are trying to feed it into it and they are uh, publishing that information so whoever subscribes that particular information they get that particular information so finally what he will be doing is he will uh, use uh, the complete terminology here i am not going to cover all these things right now in this but they will be using the dev, dev container framework the ci cd workflows the central uh, configuration where ma app manifest etc etc and and by the way this central configuration where app manifest is nothing but your uh, development environment so what are the def different kinds of tools versions etc etc that needs to uh, be present that we will be actually looking into it okay so that's a app manifest file is there so please go ahead and look into the code you will get to know so finally what he will do after the ci cd workflows he will finally get into an app container right vehicle app container so now this is an app vehicle application he pushes it into the github registry and that will be otard otard means over the air updated over the air update can be done by using eclipse hackbit this is another different tool also open source please have a look all right so one more thing i wanted to show to every one of you in this webinar it looks like a metro stations metro station map of uh, nama metro but uh, please have a look it's a map of the software defined car which i found out in internet and i found it very useful because it covers not exhaustive list but most of the best things are here you can go from one station to another station i would say let us take from uh, let me take it from where uh, trends and technologies yeah 
so big data machine learning will be coming into the place open source what i said about uh, eclipse and everything right open source is going to come into the place central car computer hpc sock innovations because innovation should happen based on uh, different power of the sock like how many teraflops of uh, of information that needs to be processed your 5g your linux right and these are all you know you know these things and finally the central station is the software defined car it looks very nice for me so i thought of just putting it here even the cloud computing if you see the infrastructure as code analytics campaigns product production it serverless public cloud etc etc and you come to the software update from the software update look at to this mqtt emergency call these are the features right emergency call traffic light connected traffic lights v2x communications pay as you drive and recall is greater than pre-call that means that it is always better i, I mean not better it is more costlier for a recall than a pre-call that that's what it meant right and uh, software uh, remote software products pilot drives uh, mission zero uh, mission zero is the car zero carbon footprint and you finally fly off this is the OTA, by the way okay so just have a look uh, if you wanted to take a picture it's, it's okay uh, it's already available uh, in the public domain now uh, let us go uh, let us understand what is skill link what are we doing so, so skill link is india's largest upcoming platform uh, focused on automotive sector so we actually have uh, 250 plus digital courses available on our platform as a digital library uh, mr pratap yes yeah, sorry to interrupt yeah, yeah before we go to the last section uh, there are a couple of questions would you like to like mm -hmm. handle that sure first? shall i read it out or yes please i think uh yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. You wanted to read it out, Venkat? Yeah, yeah. So uh, yes. one is a contribution. When you were talking about open source uh, for STV development, Karthik mentioned that Federate is also one such uh, tool. Uh, Federate is not a tool. Federate is a consortium. Okay. I yeah, I know. I, so Federate is actually a consortium where, uh, see, opens. See, this is all consortiums. You, the founding consortium members are these four: Autosar, Eclipse SDV, uh, Covisa, and uh, what is the other one? Uh, Covisa and uh, Sophie. So these are the four founding uh, members. But Federate is another consortium where Eclipse is also being a part of it. And Federate is coming as a part of Eclipse. It's like a bidirectional. Uh, even I have gone through this thing, Karthik. Uh, Federate is also being a, a member in the Eclipse SDV consortium. And Eclipse SDV is also being a member of uh, Federate Consortium. Okay, and Federate is majorly based on the European uh, market. They are actually trying to make sure that uh, all the European standards for a software defined vehicle are taking place while creating a software defined vehicle. Is, yeah, is that the bad. question? Yeah. No, it is not a question, it's just a contribution. My bad, he didn't mention it as a tool. It's a, he's mentioned it as an open source development in SDV group. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's also an open source development in SDV. That's that's one of the consortium that is an uh, that is a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on to the next question by Sivalan. Uh, he just wants to wants you to explain edge computing that comes under OTA. So he wants what? He wants to explain. He wants you to explain edge computing that will come under OTA. Edge computing. Okay. Good. So I would say, uh, I wanted to go here, ah, good. Now edge computing uh, means that the computing that takes place at the edge, that is very obvious term, uh, obvious explanation of edge computing. So what is the edge here? That's exactly what we need to define. So the uh, edge here is the high performance computer. Okay, because 
that is the only uh, gateway that actually talks to the cloud for your OTA process. Okay, so edge this particular uh, uh, high performance computer will actually uh, have multiple communications uh, which are being I mean computations that are being done in the edge itself, and there is one framework. Uh, may I know the name of the participant? Sorry, Sevabalan. Right? Yeah, Sevabalan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sevabalan, I would recommend you to look into something called BlackBerry IV. BlackBerry IVY. Please go ahead and look into it. You will get a clear answer at why because BlackBerry IV has to be deployed at the edge, and this particular edge, what we have defined already, is the high performance computer. So once we look into the BlackBerry IV architecture and understanding of it, then you will easily understand how the OTA process will be done over there. Because to explain it, it's a very, very big concept and a lot of terms will be coming in. So I'm just giving you a lead that it is BlackBerry IVY. There's also a good uh, uh, video as well. If you can look into it, it will be very, very nice. Yeah. Yeah, uh, next question by Prasanna Kumar. Does VSS address data privacy and security concerns? No, VSS doesn't uh, address data privacy and security concerns. As I said, VSS is a standardized platform. Uh, it, it is an API, as I, I already said. It is used at the vehicle abstraction layer. So whatever uh, work it will be. See, what is this VSS means? It, it actually provides a standardized interface. So how can an interface, now whatever the interface comes outside, unified interface, how can that decide the safety and functionality? No, it cannot. This is an interface which is coming outside. So this particular interface will be used in our vehicle applications. And when you talk about the safety, I would say this one, the mixed criticality orchestration. Now what is happening, I already told you in this presentation that if we have a problem with this particular virtual machine, now what has happened in this particular virtual machines is, I have divided very uh, uh, specifically on ASIL components versus non-ASIL components. And maybe infotainment has one ASIL components, but this is very much uh, you know uh, in line with the QM as well. So I have differentiated already. So whenever there's a failure of, of this particular safety, right, infotainment virtual system, there's no problem, Adas virtual machine is going to start and it, it will work. And this is a very broad example. Actual architecture will not look like this. This is just for representation purpose I have given. Because if some things fails here, so the whole infotainment system is down. Will you agree with it? No. Then how we need to do it? There's another thing which we need to do because I cannot represent that in this whole slide because it is not going to fit in. Okay, so I hope uh, I have answered the question. So, uh, what's the next question? Any other questions? Yes, Pratap. So, uh, Rajni wants to know uh, if, in case one app is uploaded in a vehicle, can it be featured in another vehicle of same variant through V2V? One app is uh, there in vehicle, then the other app, the same app, how it can be, can it okay. be featured in? Now, the whole concept of this particular vehicle applications are changing, uh, Rajini. Uh, I hope I pronounce the name right. Uh, now, as I said previously, these particular apps are containerized apps. What do you mean by containerized apps? What is meant by, con what is the concept of containerization? I containerize because I want this app to run as platform agnostic. So that means it has to run anywhere, irrespective of the platform. And just to add more information on it, now a third party person is coming in this. That is what I uh, told about SDverse, uh, a marketplace for apps. So all these apps, whatever you are going to develop, these particular apps will be going inside uh, the vehicle app, uh, vehicle application store. If these are application apps, by the way, not uh, vehicle function apps. If these are all application related apps, for example, uh, Spotify, 
okay and uh, youtube facebook if you wanted these kind of apps for automotive this kind of apps will be containerized based on our software and it has to go to the marketplace that is the sd bus so to answer your question in just a single line yes it can be done by using containerization yeah anything else uh Vinkit? yes Mr. so uh, uh shall I'm, I'm sorry, Sharna Basapa wants to know in SDV, are we going to use classic AutoSAR and adaptive AutoSAR? If yes, in which layer we need it in SDV? Yes, of course, we are going to use classic AutoSAR, adaptive AutoSAR. No AutoSARs are going out of place. Everything will be staying here. The only thing is uh, we need to containerize those applications, whatever we are trying to work on. Okay. Yeah, whether it's an autosar application or an adaptive autosar application, whether it's a ROS application. So all these things, right? Autosar, adaptive and everything, they come under one layer called middleware. I have already shown that in my in the architecture slide. Noted. Yeah. Um, next question by Shiram. When adding new features to the vehicles, should the vehicles not require to be re -homolog homologated? Sorry, repeat it, please. Uh, yeah, when adding new features to the vehicles, so the vehicles not require to be re-homologated as the performance of the vehicle will not be like what it was during the original homologation test. So I didn't understand the question of homologation because homologation has multiple meanings. I'm not finding out which which uh, right meaning I have to take over here. Uh, oh, yeah. No problem. Uh, there's a follow-up question. Uh, even in a mature ecosystem like smartphones, the OTA software update concept is not 100% foolproof. Yes. Uh, we see some phones being unstable post the updates across different brands. How is the challenge addressed in SDV as OTA is very critical? That is the challenge where uh, if you look into the six challenges, what I have showcased to you, that's one of the challenges I already told you that uh, it's still maturing. Uh, we we really don't know. I cannot give you the right answer and uh, to you because there's no right answer for that. So how do we do the OTA? How is it uh, going to help us? And how it is foolproof and safety? These are the things still a lot of uh, engineering R&D is going on right now. But the, the basic thing what I wanted to uh, showcase to you today is the concept of 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 OTA, the concept of how uh, how the vehicle services works and how does the concept of containerization, containerized vehicle apps are, are moving from uh, cloud to the vehicle and everything. But to answer your question, I also don't have the answer right now because just check if 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 if, if in in European uh, consortiums, if you can find that particular answer, you can, you can directly log into and also join in some of the meetings of Eclipse SDV and probably you can ask over there as well. But to me, I, I don't think we have a foolproof uh, thing. There is There are a lot of concepts which are coming in, uh, like uh, secure boot, okay, uh, secure boot, chain of trust in cybersecurity, et cetera, et cetera. But how is that going to help our applications I, there is no answer for that. Not a question. Uh, so in the interest of time, uh, there are a few more questions. Uh, in the interest of time, let's uh, take it offline and we'll handle sure. that. Yeah. Sure. Continue. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, uh, give a brief description on our uh, offerings. Uh, so please stay, please don't log out. There, this is very important and very interesting slide in the next coming uh, minutes. I will not take more than five minutes from here. So Skilllink actually works with more than 70%, uh, I would say more than 70% of automotive companies in India. Uh, we work with OEMs, Tire One, CR&D, PES, Product Engineering Services, and GCC. So these are the multiple logos which, which are under our kitty right now. And we are growing. These are just a few logos, whatever I'm showing to you here. Uh, and there are multiple more. And also we are growing uh, and we are trying to cater to many, many audience right now uh, from different corporates to 
to especially for at the at the place of advanced embedded and embedded uh, solutions okay and now uh, we get a lot of uh, uh, i mean callbacks i would say or a lot of leads saying that uh, can you help us further transition from the traditional automotive software development to the software defined vehicles so we got a lot of uh, requests like that from uh, multiple oems whatever you are looking in from here so what we did we created a complete academy from skilling which is called sdv academy so this particular sdv academy uh, we, uh, we 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 created and curated most of the content for uh, software defined vehicles on all domains okay so if you are looking into it you're looking at the uh, infotainment connectivity adas power train chassis and safety and body and comfort these are these are different dif different uh, domains okay so this particular modules whatever we have created are across these domains you can use it in any of these applications okay so just i'll just go through it within a quick quickly within a minute so c not will be these are the different modules and module names so c not will be the sdv overview so this overview will be given by me and also different other instructors as well i'm also one of the part of it so this is a short or shorter overview to understand what is the architecture how the zones works how how uh, your os socks works how your containerization works how your uh, adas for example you write an adas adas application so how do how we, will you um container is that particular uh, adas application etc etc all these things on, on a basic overview level on a brief overview level i would not say basic it is it is far better than basic so that is what we will compare uh, will will we'll, uh, create i mean we will cover here for uh, sdv overview and the c1 module is the complete understanding of the socks so what are all the different socks present your qualcomm nvidia your intel sock that especially when we are using for mobile i uh, your uh, st microelectronics socks and your infineon socks your infineon tricor socks and everything we will be covering those things along with practical implementations okay you will not just go through the theory theory might be around 30 percent or maximum 40 percent depends on the uh, level of understanding of what is for example if i'm talking about soft what is meant by soft if if you are not if you are not there yet over there then we might go to 20 to 30 to 30 to 40 percent of the tier but around 60 percent will be completely on the practicals so you have to start working on these practicals then only you will be understanding what is soft and and we use the schemo simulator quick emulator uh, chemo emulator uh, that one we'll be using for uh, understanding what is meant by SOC and how do we do the different kinds of applications in the SOC and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And we have different operating systems and virtualizations. All your uh, ATOS, GPOS, your AOS, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, will be covered. Uh, I, I mean, AOS is a different module, but ATOS, GPOS, and how the virtualization taking place and etc. will be covered here. And we have understanding of free ATOS, QNX applications. Linux OS. How do you customize your OS? In 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 this presentation itself, I I said most of the OEMs they are customizing their complete OS. For example, Mercedes Benz has MB dot OS, right? Volkswagen has VW dot OS. So all these things, how do you customize it? By using this Yocto, AGL, right? Linux BSP device drivers, and you also understand about aos and the very famous one classic auto sar service oriented architecture with adaptive auto sar your data distribution services and its applications your containerization of applications your docker and understanding of offboard services and output updates using eclipse hotbit okay and finally you will you'll, you'll understand the complete uh, capstone project of of, of uh, eclipse velocitas and cooks data broker which i have already showcased to you but in that particular project, you will start writing a code on Siege service application. Okay, so these are the different tools that we will be using. These are all open source. No need for any investment on this particular uh, tools side. The only thing uh, where you would be requiring investment is on understanding of these particular uh, modules and also uh, the practical hands-on. That's it. But all, all the tools will be completely open source, except QNX, Adaptive AutoSer, and Classic AutoSer. These three 
we can actually provide the licenses for you for evaluation and that will be just okay so thank you thank you very much uh, for uh, for a presentation like this thanks for attending uh, for everyone uh, probably uh, please if let me know if anybody is interested uh, for uh, for any of these particular things right so please uh, reach out to venkat so uh, he will let us know uh, it and i'll myself or my teammates will be coming to your office face to face we can have discussions and we can uh, we can help you in the capability building exercises for software defined vehicles yeah so thank you very much uh, it's all up to you uh, venkat thanks a lot mr pratap